You're listening to the Breaking Through Our Silence podcast, where we have open and honest discussions about the topics of sexual assault and domestic violence. We'll hear stories, share experiences, discuss topics, and empower champions together. And now, Marissa F. Cohen. Welcome back to Breaking Through Our Silence. Today, I want to address the cycle of abuse and the six types of abuse that are most prevalent. There are three parts to the cycle of abuse. There's the honeymoon phase, the tension building phase, and the explosion phase. This is often referred to as the power and control wheel. Abusive relationships, like every relationship, start off with the calm honeymoon phase. The abuser is charming and kind, makes you feel comfortable and loved. Mine would bring me snacks to my desk at school and we'd watch Glee because he knew I loved that show. And he would send me cute messages and tell me how beautiful, smart, and witty I was. Once he had me smitten, he began to make occasional, seemingly out-of-character remarks to me. He started to push my boundaries with verbal abuse, telling me that things I was saying were stupid, or that I was stupid, or my opinions were invalid, or that the major I declared in college was dumb. You name it, he said it. It made me feel really insecure. I began carefully selecting things to tell him, things that wouldn't make me look stupid to him things that would avoid any conflict. I felt like I was walking on eggshells and anything I said to him could be used against me or used to make me feel bad. Have you ever experienced a friend, partner, or colleague that treated you like this? It might have confused you because you were once so close or they were so nice. And all of a sudden, it started to creep in that they became a little hurtful and then very hurtful. They would make little jabs that threw you off or confused you and then you'd feel insecure or uneasy sharing things with them. This is the tension-building phase of abuse. And finally, the last phase of the cycle is the explosion phase. The explosion phase is when the big blowout happens, when the abuser snaps and creates a big act of control. It can be causing a scene or yelling. It could be a blowout of verbal or psychological abuse. It could be physical or sexual abuse. The recent trend we've been seeing is strangulation over the last couple of years. The explosion phase is usually when friends or family will be called or asked for help or when the police will be called or when the survivor tries to leave. The problem is that brings us back to the beginning of the cycle, the honeymoon or reconciliation phase. This is when the abuser comes back and apologizes, makes promises they're not going to keep, like that they're never going to hurt them again, or makes a million excuses for their behavior. Oh, but honey, I was just drunk and I was angry or I have so much stress at work and there's so much going on with me. And sometimes they'll even bring gifts and chocolate, and they're extra affectionate and attentive. And the cycle continues. Everything is great for a short period of time, and then tension builds again until we hit another explosion, and things don't get better. They will always continue to get worse and worse because throughout the tension and explosion phase, the abuser is pushing boundaries, seeing how far they can push their control over their victims. There are six major types of abuse, emotional and psychological, Verbal, financial, spiritual, sexual, and physical. Verbal abuse is when someone says mean things to you in order to belittle you and make you feel insecure. It's a way to break your confidence down so you'll submit to what they say about you. It can be cursing, yelling, calling mean or derogatory names, anything that's said with the intention to hurt someone else. Emotional and psychological abuse is used to break down your self-worth and push boundaries. For example, the psychological abuse that my abuser said to me was that I was lucky to have him because nobody else could ever love the damaged person that I was, that I had no value and no worth, and I would never aspire to be anything. I would always depend on him to take care of me. He knew that was my biggest fear because I grew up so independent and being told how I need to be an independent person and take care of myself, and he exploited that by trying to make me feel like I would never achieve that. Financial abuse is very common but not often talked about. There are a few scenarios that depict financial abuse. Either the abuser does not allow the victim to work so they won't have any access to money or the outside world and won't have work experience, which impacts someone's ability to leave the abuser. And the other type is forcing the victim to work in order to sustain the household while the abuser has full control over the finances and oftentimes stays at home. They usually monitor the bank accounts to make sure the victim isn't spending any money or lying about where they are, and also not allowing the victim any access to the money they're bringing in so they cannot leave. Spiritual abuse 
also not commonly talked about, is refusing the victim the right to their beliefs. It can be the abuser forcing the victim to believe in the abuser's religion of choice or just not allowing the victim to practice the faith or religion that they want. It cuts victims off from their communities and is also a method of control. Physical abuse is the most commonly talked about. It's actually what people usually envision when they talk about domestic violence. It's the pictures of people with black eyes making the excuse that they've walked into a doorknob or tripped and fell down the stairs. It's any physical contact that is meant to hurt someone or control someone and have them submit to the abuser. Like I mentioned before, choking and strangulation have been very common in the last few years. I personally think it's because cutting off someone's air supply is horrendous, but it's also complete control over their life. And fingerprints are easier to hide behind hair. Pushing people downstairs, biting, scratching, hitting are all different types of physical abuse. And sexual abuse. This can range from making an off-putting sexual comment or behavior like touching someone's leg or butt or any part of their body that makes them uncomfortable to full-on rape and sexual assault. Harvey Weinstein was just convicted on this. Two people came forward and said that he had forced himself on them and that sexual abuse. It is any unwanted or unprompted sexual advance where no consent is given. Abuse doesn't typically start out physical. If you meet someone, you start to like them, and then they punch you in the head, chances are you're going to leave, right? What they'll do is build trust and affection and love. And in the midst of your relationship building, they'll insert small jabs and boundary pushes to see what they can and can't get away with. And like climbing a staircase, they'll start with verbal or psychological abuse, push boundaries, and see how much they can get away with. Then they'll move up to the next step, They may touch on financial or spiritual abuse, and sometimes both. And then when they have that full mind control over you, they'll move up to the next step and may push to become physically or sexually abusive. Not every abuser follows the exact same pattern, and not every relationship becomes physically abusive. But it's not as simple as, they punched me in the face so I'll leave. It's little by little steps, building up the abuse as they go, after the victim is already smitten, or after the victim already feels trapped. People would not stay in abusive relationships if there wasn't some semblance of love, if they didn't see good in the abuser, or if there weren't times of beauty and kindness and love. They wouldn't stay. I mean, would you? If you were with somebody that you truly loved and they started acting really bad towards you, you would wish for the good times back. That doesn't mean you enjoy the abuse. It just means that you know that they can be better because they have been. And so victims will hold out for that to come back. Maybe they'll justify it by saying they're just stressed at work or this is a phase or they're going through a lot. But at the end of the day, the bad habits and the bad traits and the bad actions don't go away. The bad behavior is what stays and it's the good times that become fewer and farther between. Have you ever heard the song Love the Way You Lie by Eminem and Rihanna? I really appreciate this song for how lyrically gifted Eminem is. The song does a phenomenal job of depicting the cycle of abuse. He highlights a few different types of abuse, and the lyrics are cyclical. They take you on a journey around the cycle of abuse a few times. Rihanna depicts a victim who is conflicted because she loves her partner so much but doesn't like the abuse, and Eminem depicts the abuser and the cycle. I've picked out a few excerpts from the song to break down, but I urge you to listen to the whole song and try and find the different parts of the cycle. I'm not even going to try to rap. I'm just going to read the lyrics. That is so not my forte. (laughs) So this part is an explosion. Where are you going? I'm leaving you. No, you ain't. Come back. We're running right back. Here we go again. And then it goes to the honeymoon phase. It's so insane because when it's going good, it's going great. I'm Superman with the wind on his back. She's Lois Lane. But when it's bad, it's awful. I feel so ashamed. I snapped. Who's that dude? I don't even know his name. I laid hands on her. I'll never stoop so low again. I guess I don't know my own strength. And then the chorus, you hear Rihanna sing. And then it goes back to... You ever love somebody so much, you can barely breathe when you're with them. You meet, and neither one of you even knows what hit them. Got that warm, fuzzy feeling, yeah, them chills used to get them. And then it goes to tension building. Now you're getting fucking sick of looking at them. You swore you've never hit them, never do nothing to hurt them. Now you're in each other's face spewing venom and these words when you spit them. And this is an explosion. You push, pull each other's hair, scratch, claw, bit them, throw them down, pin them. So lost in the moments when you're in them. It's the rage that's the culprit. It controls you both. If you listen to the whole song, it rounds the cycle a few times, like I said. And there are a ton of other songs that reference abuse or the cycle of abuse. Wasted or Blown Away by Carrie Underwood. 
My Immortal by Evanescence, Better Man by Little Big Town. That's a really good one because it references that want to go back from the victim's perspective, but having to fight yourself to recognize that going back is a mistake. I could do an entire podcast episode on just music about abuse and sexual assault. And if that's something that you'd want to hear, leave me a comment and I will absolutely do that. In the meantime, I hope this helped you understand more about the cycle of abuse and the types of abuse that are out there. It's way more than just hitting someone. Abuse destroys you psychologically and mentally until you feel completely trapped and isolated. It's a horrible place to be. But we've built a community here that's in place to help support and empower survivors to leave and feel confident about growing into their strongest selves. Thank you for joining me today and breaking through our silence. I'll talk to you next week. You've been listening to Breaking Through Our Silence with new episodes every Wednesday. Don't forget to rate and share this podcast. Stay in touch with us and have your voice be heard.